About 11 years ago, I was driving in the car listening to a radio infomercial when I stumbled across this. Asta Xanthin. And since then, this has been my most consistently consumed dietary supplement, and I feel like that's because I've noticed it really works. Now with that being said, has there been a dark side to consuming this for so long? I'm gonna get to that, but first, what is astaxanthin? What does the science say? And what have been the benefits I've experienced over the last 10 plus years now? But you gotta focus. So what astaxanthin actually is, is kind of wild. It is a red-orange pigment, or a carotenoid, and it is produced in algae when the algae undergoes stress. So in essence, it's basically protecting the cell's DNA from this damage and allowing the algae to grow, live longer, and continue to produce. And now you can see why it has been proposed that this is a powerful dietary supplement in the anti-aging realm. Naturally, in a diet, if you do believe fish are a part of a diet, or in fact, if you believe some yeasts are a part of a diet, then you would naturally be consuming astaxanthin. Because in fish like sockeye salmon, for instance, the reason the fish is red is because that fish consumes some of the algae, which has astaxanthin, and that bioaccumulates in the fish. And then if you eat the fish, you're getting the astaxanthin via that route. With that being said, it is probably unlikely you're gonna be eating salmon every day, at least in my case, but I wanted to take astaxanthin every day to super physiologically load on it, basically. That was my idea. So now, after discovering the potent antioxidant properties that astaxanthin was having for the algae, based on my research, it actually wasn't until the 90s when astaxanthin was considered to be taken as a dietary supplement. So if you consider the 90s kind of recent, then I guess most of the long-term research and some of the anecdotal evidence on astaxanthin isn't gonna be much older than the 90s. But now looking at this review of multiple studies based on the research, it does appear like humans who consume astaxanthin might get some of the same benefits that the algae that produce the astaxanthin, and that is acting like an antioxidant in the human body. I'll leave a link to this review in the description, but it goes over a multitude of benefits when it comes to astaxanthin and human dietary supplementation. Everything from cognitive neurological health to cardiovascular health to inflammation control, a lot of different very positive correlations. And now, however, without boring you with the science, I'm going to talk about my experience, why I started taking astaxanthin, and what I noticed. So like I first just mentioned, I actually stumbled across astaxanthin listening to a radio infomercial just driving around in the car on the weekend. Now, believe it or not, even though it was 11 years ago, what intrigued me about astaxanthin was the fact that on this radio show, they were talking about astaxanthin and the anti-aging benefits. But at the time I was 24 and I was really pushing my training, really pushing my training impactfully, doing a lot of acrobatic like movements, a lot of impactful movements. And I was getting a little bit worried because I was having a lot of wrist injuries at the time. And I was thinking like, man, is my cartilage just like disappearing? Am I destroying my body? And am I gonna be paying for this when I'm older basically? So anything that was like anti-aging, I thought of it like, preventative. So I remember trying it and I started out with these four milligram capsules. Once I started taking it, within the first couple of days, I noticed my workout stamina seemed like it was going through the roof. Like it seemed like I could just keep going and going at the same intensity. Now initially before taking estesanthin, my sessions would be like 30 to 45 minutes of breakdance training and then 30 minutes of tricking and I was pretty exhausted. But now after supplementing with astaxanthin, I noticed myself able to push this further. My b-boy breakdance sessions would go up to about an hour and a half, and my tricking sessions would be 30 minutes to an hour, sometimes another hour and a half. And like I said, I got my training sessions up to about two, sometimes three hours. And I was doing this week after week after week. Also something I noticed physically when taking this that I thought was a benefit was right after taking this supplement, I noticed what felt like a flush in the skin of this healthy looking like tan, but it wasn't a tan. It was more like this carotenoid flush. And going back to the studies now, if you do look at some of the studies, it shows there is a correlation with astaxanthin supplementation and skin health in like skin elasticity and a reduction of oxidative damage to the skin. And considering I was spending a lot of time out in the sun trying to trick and stuff, I thought some extra skin protection might be beneficial and that was another reason I was taking astaxanthin. So I felt like what was way better muscular stamina 
better skin health, at least right after I took it, and perhaps over the long term, taking it now for 11 years. But another thing I noticed was a cognitive clarity. There was almost like this subtle cognitive calmness, very subtle, that I've noticed when I would take astaxanthin versus when I wouldn't take it, because there were some days when I did not take astaxanthin, like when I eventually made it a yearly thing, taking a month off of all supplements and then getting back on it, I noticed there's a, there was a subtle difference specifically with astaxanthin. Now, aside from that, one more thing I think astaxanthin was helping me with was inflammation control. And the way I would describe it is kind of like a more mild turmeric. Now, when I started taking astaxanthin, I did notice that when I wasn't taking turmeric, it felt like maybe I am getting an anti-inflammatory effect from this as well, but maybe a little bit more mild. And then when I would stack it with curcumin, those would be some of the craziest workouts, especially if I was feeling a little achy, a little sore, curcumin, astaxanthin, coffee, and that's actually what I've been taking recently for the past well, couple of months now because of the back thing and the shoulder thing. And it's really helped me push recently through some crazy workouts. But before I get carried away and talk about supplement combinations, I just wanna say I suspect astaxanthin has an anti-inflammatory effect, at least on me, from what I noticed over the last 11 years. So yeah, with the performance benefits, with the potential skin benefits, with the potential anti-aging benefits in my mind, I'm thinking long-term here when I first started taking it, and not noticing any negative side effects taking this every single day. Well, I went years taking this every single day. And over the course of those five years, I didn't just stick to that four milligram dose. I actually upped the dose to the 12 milligrams. And I think there was some time where I went back to the four milligram dose once, and then came back to the 12, maybe did that a couple times actually. But I took it every single day, whether four, whether 12 milligrams, every single day on the dot, it was my go-to supplement for about five years. Now where, now where things really solidify for me is when I got around to 2018, 19, where I was like, you know what? I kind of want to take a break from all supplements for a month, like resensitize myself, and that I did. And I kind of made it a yearly thing since where I take like a whole month off of supplements. But long story short, when I went back on astaxanthin after taking a month off of everything, I noticed like that, that carotenoid rush, that flush to the skin, and I felt like I looked healthier than ever, and it felt like maybe my stamina trickled down over that month, but when I took it again, boom, right back up. Like, I felt like I could breathe better. Like, I'm just, especially when I'm working out, like the stamina, absolutely nuts. Now, I often get told I am maybe a little too optimistic about supplements, and I think they're working way better for me than it actually is, but maybe that's actually part of this whole entire thing. I believed in this supplement, I took it, I really believed I was seeing positive results, and that positive reinforcement loop perhaps helped it work better. So maybe that's something to consider if you're going to commit yourself to taking a dietary supplement at your own risk. Now, with that being said, there are some things with certain astaxanthin supplements that I don't really like, and it led me to take this one supplement that I've been taking now, and then there are some potential concerns taking this so long that I'm going to cover. First of all, a lot of the astaxanthin supplements, and some that I were taking, are suspended. Well, the astaxanthin is suspended in oil, and that oil is typically a cheaper seed oil, like sunflower seed oil, safflower seed oil, or or something like that. And I wasn't really trying to like avoid seed oils until around like 2019, 2020. And when I kind of realized this, that I was basically taking a seed oil every morning, and I know it's just a small amount, probably negligible, probably not even a problem, but still, I was then on the hunt for any astaxanthin supplementation that wasn't suspended in seed oils. And I found a few that were in MCT oil, which is like a coconut oil, which I thought was okay. And then I found this one that is my go-to now that comes in a glass jar. And the astaxanthin in the capsules is suspended in organic olive oil. The only issue is it's kind of expensive. It's like a dollar a serving, which is kind of nuts for a pill. But the benefits outweigh the cost. At least that's what I tell myself. So yeah, this is the one I've been taking for the last couple of years. Actually, this one and there's this other one that I've experimented with that comes in like a powdered form. So I don't know too much about that. I don't know if that's really good. But when I took it, I noticed the same benefits as well. It's by this other company called like uh, Synergy, I want to say. So I've, I've kind of cycled between the two. And that one's kind of pricey as well. They're, these ones that aren't suspended in the seed oils are kind of, kind of pricey. So... Am I a sucker? Maybe. Okay, now what about the potential dark side of astaxanthin that I may have been experiencing this whole time? Well, I've come across some comments that astaxanthin might reduce DHT. 
And as you may know, DHT often gets a bad rap because it's associated with male pattern baldness, which now that I think about it, is this the reason I haven't gone bald yet? Because I've been consuming astaxanthin for the last 11 years? I don't think so necessarily. Maybe, might have a little something to do with it. Maybe, maybe it, maybe it does. But regardless, let's go back to the whole DHT thing. Astaxanthin might block DHT. Why is that a bad thing then? Well, because DHT is a very powerful form of testosterone for, for many male benefit things like getting strong, being aggressive, building muscle. So do I think this blocked some DHT and made me miss out on some of that male potential? I don't think so. Maybe some of you guys would disagree and you're like, dude, yeah, you are soft. You are soft. No, I think I'm soft because I'm just soft. I've always been soft. All right. But you know, if I could go back, I would still take it up until now because I feel like the benefits have outweighed any potential downsides. I don't think there's been any negative effect from it that I've experienced, but I'm just telling you what I've heard. Another potential negative is if you get it on something white, it will stain like crazy. In fact, my finger is probably going to be stained for the next couple of days because my heat from my hand melted through this capsule. So I'm gonna be really careful not to get this on the carpet. Okay, so before I get off track, how have I been taking astaxanthin? I remember initially taking it with like nut butter, like some kind of nut butter, like peanut butter or almond butter or something like that, because I heard astaxanthin was fat soluble and it would better assimilate taken with fats. However, recently over the past couple of years, I've been taking it on an empty stomach in the morning. Now, keep in mind, there is a little bit of organic olive oil in these capsules, which, might just be enough to help it get assimilated. But I do feel like when taking it earlier in the morning, I get almost like that cognitive boost I talked about when it comes to my work day, plus the most stamina benefits in my workout later in the day. Like I can just power through the entire day like crazy. And I feel like this definitely helps with that. So for the past couple of years, I've been taking astaxanthin every day, except for that one month, two weeks to one month, at the end of the year or beginning of the year where I basically take a little bit of time off supplementation. However, recently I've been taking one day a week off of supplements, typically Sunday, and I feel like that helps Monday be more of a sensitive day to supplements. Just something I'm trying, you know, trying to get the most out of the least. So yeah, that's just what I'm doing right now. With that being said, will it be the ultimate anti-aging supplement that I'll be looking back on 10 more years from now being like, this is the go-to? I don't know, maybe the last 11 years have been pretty promising from my experience. Like every time I've taken it, I've noticed nothing but benefits and I feel like there's something to it. I want to say it's a better anti-aging supplement than NMN and NR and all that crap, at least for me, from my experience. In my opinion, this is the perfect balance between nature and human curiosity, deriving something from nature and giving a constant blast of a dose. It's like that perfect hybrid. You know, cause without going off on a tangent, I'm a little bit sus of like everything from nature is good for you, but also I'm sus of going way too sciencey on stuff too. So I'm like, I'm, I'm feeling like there's this hybrid balance that's just gonna be the ultimate. It's just a theory. It's just a theory I have, but I feel like astaxanthin perfectly falls in there. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it was informative, entertaining, and I hope you all have a great day. Remember, always take supplements at your own risk. Do your own research. This is just my experience and what I researched. Stay tuned, more videos coming out. I have some interesting challenges coming. I think you're gonna be entertained. Hope you all have a great day. Peace, I will see you all in the next video.